A few days ago, The Athletic ranked the Islanders prospect pool 31st out of 32 teams. They only looked at prospects 22 or younger, and they didn't really look at all of them. So what about the players that they missed? What are they doing and how are they doing? Like every other YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button. Don't miss a video. Also, go to Twitter, follow at TLO Mitch. That is me. Don't miss any breaking information I haven't yet shared on the channel. The other day, The Athletic ranked the Islanders prospect pool 31 out of 32 teams. And to do so, they looked at the quality of the prospects that are 22 years or younger in the Islanders prospect pool and in every other NHL's prospect pool. Um, and while I have an issue with 23 or under, I understand why the line exists. Um, but in that ranking, Scott Wheeler didn't look at every single prospect that was 22 or younger. For a reason, some of these, well, not uh, some of these, all of these prospects just don't factor in his ranking because he doesn't see them as hitting the NHL level. So let's talk about those players. And it's really come down to five guys. It's just five players that we're talking about. Alex Jeffries, Christian Krieger, Thomas Mahu, I'm going to screw this up, Henrik Tikkanen, and Jacob Pavanka. Those are the five guys that did not factor in Scott Wheeler's ranking. So how are they doing? Are they growing over the last couple of years or not? Alex Jeffries is probably the highest ranking prospect in this group of players. When you look at his growth rate over the last four years, things are trending in the right direction, right? Like growth year over year, 13 point NHLE last year. He's only 9.2 this year. He's taken a step back, but we're halfway through the year. Uh, and things are going well right now. Again, like I said in the last video, four points in the last six games for him. So things are going well for Alex Jeffries. You're talking about a sophomore player as well at the NCAA level, still playing top line minutes. Like we'll get to Jacob Pavanka later, but he's just finally hitting top line for Notre Dame. That was not the case for Alex Jeffries. Rookie year, freshman year, boom, right in top line, top six, penalty kill, power play, you name it, he was playing it. Um... There's something to this kid. I'm not going to go and say he's going to be an NHL great or an NHL all-star. Could he hit the NHL? Maybe. Uh, he's a hardworking and intelligent player with quite a bit of skill. So we'll see where that takes him. But things are trending well right now. Obviously, 9-point NHLE. You can see why Scott Wheeler did not have him in his rankings. Then we got Christian Krieger. We've spoken about him before and his growth. We've got marginal growth there from the defensive defenseman out of an MCU. Uh, things are going well for him. The reason he doesn't factor in Scott Wheeler's ranking is, well, he's not particularly dominant at the level he's playing at. And so even if you're not putting up points, you would expect some sort of dominance in terms of his shutdown ability. And he's not just, he's not that right now. Could he eventually? Yeah, well, sure. Of course. Anything is possible. Um, but as it stands now, there's a reason he doesn't bear high in the rankings, even if he's not putting up at high NHLE. It's just he's not that dominant shutdown guy necessarily. Thomas Mahu made the switch from the Czech Republic to North America. He was looking to do it earlier in the year, finally did this year, uh, later in the year, joining the Youngstown Phantoms, and is going to be transferring to Colorado College once the season is done. Is he growing? Are things going well for him? Well, yeah, they are. You're, you're seeing good growth out of him uh, so far this year. 3.27 NHLE last year to 5.17 this year. Okay, all right, things are good. Remember, this is a 7th round pick, so this is very much th throwing a dart against the board and seeing if it sticks. Um, again, just like these other guys, not really dominant in any way, shape, or form at any level. A good player, uh, right shot defenseman, is able to carry the puck, is okay in his own end, isn't necessarily big. Um, so there's no dominant the, the defining characteristic of his game. It could go any way. Um, so we'll see here, but what you want to see again is growth. And we're seeing that even if it's just marginal. Jacob Pavanka, again, we're looking at marginal growth here, which is why these guys aren't in the top end of the rankings or aren't, aren't really mentioned at all because they're marginal when it comes to the prospect pool. Uh, Pavanka 5.955 or 655 NHLE right now. Things are going well now that he's finally playing. He missed most of the first half of the year. Uh, with an ankle injury or an Achilles injury, I believe, that he picked up training in the Czech Republic. He's finally playing three points, eight games. Things are going well. Um, he's not really um, going to put up a lot of points. But what he will do is he's dominant in the faceoff circle. Absolutely elite faceoff man. Can he be a bottom six center? Yeah, maybe. 
maybe he's he's good defensively he's okay offensively and again wins a ton of draws which is important right you we talk about puck possession well when you got a 50 50 puck right away from the you know start of any any play and he wins them like let's say 60 percent of the time that's good that's really good so can he carve out a pro career maybe can he do something at the nhl level We'll see about that. A 5.9655 NHLE isn't anything to write home about, which again is why we're not talking about them when the overall rankings. But marginal growth, so double thumbs up. Final one, Henrik Tikkanen. So now we're into goalies, which is always <laughs> toss-up. His NHLE looks very good, right? Like the, the move up from year over year is great. He went from 4.5. Remember, he was playing um, U20 uh, two years ago. And then he moved to the Mestis in uh, 19 or 2021, right? Playing for Kalpa's system. And he got a, a couple of games at the legal level as well to an 11.3 NHLE. Again, goalie. So don't, don't take that as actual point production. Uh, and then 24 this year, now that he's moved to the Alzenskans and he's playing with Moto. He's not their number one guy, but it, it's kind of like a one, two situation between him and Tex Williams or Tex Williams or is it Williamson? It might be Williamson. Either way, Tex is his first name, and that's really the only thing that you need to know about him. Um, Tex, the number one goalie for Moto, and then you've got Henry Tikkanen, who's in the number two, and, and is playing relatively well. Very up-and-down type of performance from him, but he just needs a little bit more time. He, he's, a, he's a really big guy. He needs to find his game and settle into uh, a rhythm, and I think he's going to get that playing with Moto. He's getting that this year. Can he be an NHLer? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I would love to see that because who doesn't love to see a six foot seven goalie? Uh, but he's still got some uh, kinks to work out. And it seems like he's doing that with Moto. But again, what we're really interested in is are we seeing growth from the, these marginal guys? And yes, when it comes to Henrik Tikkanen, we are absolutely seeing that growth. So that's your U23 players that did not make the original cut for the ranking. Just trying to figure out where they are and how they're doing. As you can see with all these guys, there is marginal growth growing into their uh, into their development, which is exactly what you want to see. Are any of these going to be breaks and turn into something at the NHL level? Who knows, right? So that's why they don't factor into Scott Wheeler's ranking and why he doesn't discuss them because like they're marginal players that marginally move the needle forward. It's not going to move them from 31st to 30th or even let's say 29th. They're just not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Hit that subscribe button. And if you have so far, thank you, thank you, thank you.